Hi, I'm Dale Johnson, and thanks for visiting the Smith Equipment YouTube Classroom. In this lesson, we're going to go through the proper equipment setup for cutting with an oxy-fuel cutting torch. I'll also be demonstrating some basic cutting techniques and the proper way to shut down the oxy-fuel system. As we begin, always use equipment of good repair. Today, we're using the Smith Equipment brand. Our equipment is assembled already for us today, but a few things you need to know for sure. Cylinders are always secure. You'll notice a chain around these. Before an oxygen regulator is attached to a cylinder, open this valve to blow out any dirt or debris that might be in that valve connection. Attach the regulator securely. That's a right-hand connection. Notice that the regulator is pointed in somewhat of an upward direction. On the acetylene side, do not crack open this valve to blow out any acetylene gas. Simply inspect your valve to make sure that it is okay. It's not full of dirt or anything. Attach your regulator securely. Notice that this is a left-hand connection, easily identified by a machining gra a groove in that connection nut. That's a left-hand connection. It, too, is in somewhat of an upward direction. The outlet, likewise, is a left-hand connection on the acetylene side of the system. As we move further downstream, we check our hoses to make sure that they too are in good repair, and we've also attached flashback arresters between the hoses and the torch. Our next step will be to pressurize the system as we get close to operational things. And uh, our next step is going to be putting pressure into the regulator. As we stand to the side of the cylinder, this adjusting screw has no pressure on it. Open your cylinder valve slowly as you see the contents gauge needle come up and stop and now open it all the way. Pressure shows here from what's in the cylinder. Pressure shows here from what we're going to work with and is yet zero. On the fuel side or on the acetylene side of the system, one good wrist twist should be sufficient to open that valve. Again, you see pressure showing from what's in the cylinder, zero on the outlet side yet. As we uh, get to the next step here, we're going to use a cutting tip called an SC12-0. And the pressure we will use can be found in the owner's manual on, the, in, on, the, uh, on our website. Okay, there's another place to find that, and there's other printed materials too. But the tip that we're using is a heavy-duty acetylene tip, size is zero, which will run at 35 pounds of oxygen pressure. Dialing as I'm turning this in, I get 30, I reach 35 pounds. On the uh, acetylene side, we're going to run with 10 pounds. So we have pressure now from the cylinder into the outlet side of the regulator. We want to bring that downstream. Opening one torch valve, the acetylene valve, I'm allowing gas to flow through here, acetylene only, five seconds per 25 foot of hose, shut it off. This is an oxygen valve, open it all the way. Open your oxygen valve on the forward position, five seconds per 25 foot of hose, five seconds. That way we are guaranteeing we have the right gas in the right place far enough downstream in the system. We're about to strike the torch, or, or using a non-open flame friction device, establish some flame, but one more step that's important for us to do, and that is check for a leak. Now that we have pressure in this system, using a dish soap water-based solution, applying at every joint point, if there is any leak in the system, large bubbles will appear. The next thing as we begin our operation is to view your area. Are there any combustibles nearby? We want to make sure that they are removed. Make sure there's a working fire extinguisher close by. Leather gloves. Safety eyewear will now be replaced by shade 3 or shade 5 oxy-fuel cutting glasses. An outer garment or leathers may well be appropriate. My friction device open the in hand. Open the acetylene valve about one quarter turn. Open this acetylene valve until this flame is quite bushy. That black soot look has disappeared primarily. At that point, we will now open our preheat oxygen valve, the forward valve, 
slowly, adding oxygen to make a neutral flame. As we add oxygen, the long flame becomes shorter and it will match up exactly with the preheat flame. That is a neutral flame and the type of flame we will use 100% of the time for cutting. Another nice feature with the Smith Torch, by the way, even with flame, I can turn this valve to make the to make turn the handle so the valves will be in any position that I that I like them to be in for my own use. Now, we're going to make one cut here to show you that, but then I want to go back and explain that as we're using the cutting attachment now, other things can be used, such as a heating tip, a brazing tip, and we'll explain what a hand torch is in just a moment. Get yourself secure and comfortable. Hold your flame close to the metal, but off a roughly a eighth to a quarter of an inch. Once you see a red or orange appearance, hit your cutting lever. Accomplish your, your cut. To extinguish the flame of the torch, turn off your oxygen valve, turn off your fuel valve, turn off this oxygen valve, and the torch is now properly shut down. We'll remove the cutting attachment. Now we have the option of using a multi-flame heating tip or a gas welding or brazing tip. This is not a combination torch, this is a hand torch. It does not come apart in the middle and would be used exclusively for cutting operations. Hand tightening is all that's necessary. As we put the tip into the torch, hand tightening is firmly, but generally hand tightening is all that's necessary. We will now shut down the system completely as though it was the end of the day. Go to the source, being cylinders, shut off the gas supply. Step two, drain the system. Fuel or acetylene needles of the regulator all go to zero. Now shut that acetylene valve. Drain out the oxygen side of the system. You'll see these needles go to zero. Now shut the valve. The final step, loosen or back out the adjusting screw until no pressure is felt. They are now in a loose, loose feel. Okay. The system is now properly and safely shut down at the end of the day. This in no way covers all the safety rules and procedures for safely operating this equipment. Be sure and carefully read and understand the Oxyfuel Equipment Manufacturer's safety and operational instructions before operating any of this type of equipment. Also, be sure to look for upcoming lessons on the Smith Equipment YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.